Word on the street is that traffic in Los Angeles is getting worse. The 40th annual chili cook-off sizzles in Thousand Oaks, and soil in Vernon is still contaminated from the egg crisis. This is Valley View News. Hello, and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Jarena Silva. And I'm Nicholas Seaman. Donald Trump has won all five Republican presidential primaries this week. This is a far bigger win than we even expected. I just want to tell you, for the five states, I am so honored. This was, to me, our biggest night because it shows such diversity. Hillary Clinton has dominated in the five Democratic presidential primaries this week. We're going to imagine a tomorrow where hard work is honored, families are supported, streets are safe, and communities are strong, and where love trumps hate. Republican presidential nominees Ted Cruz and John Kasich are joining forces to try and block Donald Trump's chances at gaining the required number of delegates to claim the GOP nomination. The two are dividing up the remaining number of primaries in order to block Trump. The two say they were working on this plan over two weeks ago. A new study has confirmed what many feared in areas near the closed Exi battery plant. Reporter Desiree Lopez has the latest. A study released by the California Department of Public Health have found that children living near the now closed Exide battery plant have higher lead levels in their blood. Even if they attempt to treat it, they probably can reduce the lead level in the blood, but the damage to organs is basically going to be for the rest of their lives. That's how, that's how dangerous lead is. Legislation was signed by Governor Jerry Brown to expedite cleanup and testing, but residents in the surrounding areas say they are worried about future problems. It's scary as a resident to know that I could be contaminated, that in the long run I could have problems in my health. Like how could you like really be producing, working, having knowledge of producing har harmful chemicals and releasing it to the ground or the air and all the kids getting affected by it. The testing and cleanup is expected to be paid back by Excite itself or any other responsible parties. In Vernon, I am Desiree Lopez, Valley View News. The American Lung Association says LA has the worst air pollution in California. The report says children in California will have stunted lung growth because of their exposure to air pollution. Other cities in California are either the most ozone polluted cities or most polluted by particle pollution. There have been efforts to reduce pollution in California, but officials say there is a long way to go. If you live in Los Angeles, you know that traffic is something everyone has to deal with on a daily basis. Valley View News reporter Diana Jimenez has more in the story. If you're on the 405 freeway on a Friday afternoon, you can expect plenty of traffic. Los Angeles has been named the worst city to deal with traffic in the United States again. Angelino spent approximately 51 hours in traffic a year. PetSmart manager Emma Brady moved to Los Angeles from Buffalo, New York six months ago. Uh, the traffic here changes very quickly, so if I were to leave at 5.05 one day, I could get somewhere in 15 minutes, you leave at 5.07 here, and then it's an hour. Whereas in Buffalo, there's only two times a day that it's busy. Manager of Season Parking and Transportation Services, Larry Isro, hopes that students use different types of transportation to get to school. We'd like to see less vehicles on campus to create a more sustainable environment. We'd like to see the use of public transportation increased and uh, alternative modes of transportation, not just the bus, but it could be walking, it could be riding your bicycle to work. Traffic is something that can test a person's patience. The public transit here isn't the greatest. It takes you significantly longer to get somewhere than it probably should. Even though traffic causes inconveniences when on public transportation or when driving a car, solutions like planning your day ahead or leaving your house at least an hour early will make sure that you get to your destination on time. The next time you're feeling impatient or frustrated in traffic, the best thing to do is to relax and play some good music. In Northridge, this is Diana Jimenez for Valley View News. Local residents had the chance to learn about earth-friendly and healthy choices at Grand Park in downtown. Valley View News reporter Carolina Torres has more on the story. The Music Center and the Department of Water and Power hosted Earth Day LA at Grand Park. The Music Center in Grand Park invited about 500 elementary and middle schoolers to this event. Here, kids and adults had the opportunity to learn how to live sustainably. 
Just being more aware of water and sustainability, and I can I think it can even go as far as you know the things you eat, the food that you eat as well, um, and just being aware that you know this is the only place we have to live, so <laughs> we need to take care of it. Eco product information was also available. The cocoon as a tool helps us grow trees in places where they usually don't grow. So we actually use this to grow trees in uh, very arid and harsh conditions in places like the Middle East and in Africa and Mexico, um, and now in California where trees have a really hard time growing. They go to farms and grocery stores, get what's going to end up in, in the trash, divert that away, take it to their composting facility, turn it into compost, which is good for your garden. So instead of causing harm, something good. While there are people that can afford solar systems, low-income homeowners now have access to them. Renewable energy is a way to reduce the amount of pollution in the environment. So the more solar we install, uh, the less um, need for very polluting fuels like oil, gas. If, if you qualify for this program, you can get anywhere from a fifteen to $20,000 system at no cost. Children took home with them a plant using compost. Children get to experience a lot of different um, health-friendly and earth-friendly activities. The Department of Water and Power holds events like this to inform Angelinos about different methods to live clean and go green. In Los Angeles, Carolina Torres for Valley View News. Many volunteers gathered last weekend for an urban cleanup down on Hyde Park Boulevard. Valley View News reporter Stephanie Lopez has more on the story. The cleanup was organized by California Greenworks where more than 60 people helped out. The California Greenworks organization focuses on improving the environment in urban communities. John Kaliski, the chair of the Board of California Greenworks, says they want to raise awareness to other communities. That this community, like every community in Los Angeles, can be green and sustainable. The volunteers gathered dozens of trash bags filled with garbage and weeds. This is part of another project, which is to plant trees in this area. Mike Metters, the founder of California Greenworks, says there are multiple reasons why they want to plant trees. One, they uh, reduce carbon emissions, you know, in our environment. And then two, they beautify the community that, where they are. And three, there's, a, there's been a national survey that shows that people dump less in areas where there are trees. In making improvements to the community environment, also helps promote well-being for people who live in the area. Pro Heard, a local member of the community, says it's important for everyone to do their part for the environment. You know, this is these are our environments that we live in, and you know, to keep it clean, keep it healthy, and so people can thrive, and we can thrive, and we have something to enjoy. In Los Angeles, Stephanie Lopez for Valley View News. The city of Redondo Beach is working with public and private investors to revitalize the Redondo waterfront. Valley View News reporter Ariana Datius has more on the story. Residents and visitors might not see the site of the rundown Redondo Beach Pier and Marina much longer. Instead, Redondo Beach could look like this. The waterfront project proposes to revitalize the community by bringing in 200,000 square feet of retail space a boutique oceanfront hotel, as well as a pedestrian walk bridge over the water, and a water taxi service that would go from Santa Monica to the South Bay and eventually Catalina Island. The project will also include recreational activities for the community. The project has already brought a new bike path on Harbor Drive that connects Redondo Beach to the neighboring city of Hermosa Beach. Many Redondo Beach residents support the project and are looking forward to having a nice place for the community to come together. Kind of been needing some construction over the time. It's a little run down. I think um, redoing a lot of the stuff will be really good for the community and it'll bring a lot of more people to Redondo Beach. It's a great opportunity to bring new restaurants and new fun things into town to get people out, get people spending money. I think if they fix it up, we'll get more people to come down to Redondo Beach and it's a really nice ocean. The new project would bring in $3 million in tax revenues and create 2,500 new jobs in the city. Craig Barnes has owned the Marina bike rental shop for almost 30 years. He says that although it seems like a good idea on paper, 
He is skeptical about what the project will do for local business. A positive thing, I just, you know, we have to get into politics after that as to how it's structured. Uh, I understand that the new waterfront doesn't pay rent for 30 years. That concerns me. The South Bay community also has worries that the large corporation Center Cal will be taking away the uniqueness of the city. The developers are waiting on the city's approval of the environmental impact report before it reaches the Harbor and Coastal Commission. But the community is hopeful that the rundown area can be rejuvenated along with keeping its beach feel. This is Ariana Takis reporting for Valley View. An experimental solar-powered plane flying around the world landed in California after a two-and-a-half-day flight across the Pacific. Solar Impulse 2 touched down in Mountain View just before midnight last Sunday. The plane weighs about as much as an SUV and was able to make it around the world without a single drop of fuel. When we come back, a new state bill that will help students graduate from college on time. And a local nonprofit organization helps victims of domestic violence. 60,000 protesters rallied outside the Turkish consulate to observe the 101st anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Armenians want the Turkish government to admit its guilt in the genocide. In March, Glendale became the first school district in the country to establish a day in remembrance of the genocide. Southern California is home to the largest Armenian community outside of Armenia. One person has been arrested for battery after a video emerged online of a high school fight in Stevenson Ranch. The alleged victim is a special needs student at West Ranch High School. Footage shows the suspect placing the victim in a chokehold and then other students coming to his aid. California Senator Steve Glazer introduced a new bill that would help increase graduation rates at all California state universities. Valley View News reporter Annie Stonick has more on the story. In just four weeks' time, CSUN students will sit here on the Oviat lawn in anticipation of receiving their diplomas. But the majority of students will have waited more than six years for this moment. On average, it takes California State University students 25% longer to graduate than other students at schools across the country. A bill called California Promise will offer incentives to reduce the amount of time it takes a student to graduate. Students like these, who are waiting to meet with an advisor, will have better advisement opportunities and the possibility of priority registration. The bill also promises students who keep a C average and take more than 15 units will receive a tuition freeze. Graduation advisor Jill McGee says the proposed bill may not be very effective. Even though they have these incentives, it may just not be logistically possible for them to do this. But I think having that incentive can change certain students' frame of mind and it could help some. Maybe not all, but I think it could benefit a, a, a good portion of students. Assistant Director of Undergraduate Degree Services, Erin Lindbergh, says it can be hard for a student to get their degree in four years. Students have lives outside of school, so in general we would love if students could take 15 units every semester in four years and be done, but that's not always realistic for all students. One CSUN student explains how she was able to stay on track for graduation. Um, I did take a lot of summer courses and I did go to my advisor to get extra units added on. So one year during my freshman year, I did take, or one semester I took 18 units instead of 16. Um, I just tried as hard as I could to make sure I graduated in four years. Students could save $26,000, the average cost for an additional year at a university, and start working in their field sooner. Reporting at CSUN for Valley View, I'm Annie Stonick. Researchers say that over the last 40 years, the average lifespan has increased, but the quality of life has decreased. Men's lifespan has increased by nine years and women's by six. But the number of years people spend on disability has increased by three to four years. HIV researchers have found how long-term HIV infection causes premature aging of cells. A study done by the University of Nebraska and University of California at San Diego looked at 44 people with and without HIV. They found that people with HIV had changes in their DNA that were similar to someone who was five years older. They discovered aging in the cell's DNA by looking at specific biomarkers. Researchers say that this study will help determine whether patients should receive health care early. Domestic violence is an ongoing issue in the United States, but there are places that help end the cycle. Valley View News reporter Stephanie Lopez has more on the story. 
The National Coalition Against Domestic Violence reports that 1 in 15 children are exposed to intimate partner violence, and 90 percent of them witness the violence. Mandy Gibson, director of operations at the Good Shepherd Shelter, says many women experience the violence so badly it causes mental health problems. By the time they get to us, all of the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, such as um, being really hypervigilant, which means really jumpy to loud noises, difficulty sleeping, difficulty eating, having uh, flashbacks of the violence. Shelters offer a safe space for families who have experienced domestic violence. Each family in this shelter has their own apartment. This helps the moms regain their power as the provider for the family. So oftentimes with domestic violence, the batterer will undermine her so that the children don't respect her and, and will act out towards her. So having her own apartment is really important to establishing herself as the head of her household. There is a 96% success rate in ending the cycle of violence from the Good Shepherd Shelter. Survivor of domestic violence, Reina Venezuela, says the shelter has helped her change her life. It helps you with your self-confidence, to feel safe about yourself, and to not be afraid. In Los Angeles, Stephanie Lopez, Valley View News. The city of Cleveland has agreed to pay $6 million to the family of a 12-year-old boy who was killed by police two years ago. The victim, Tamir Rice, was brandishing a toy gun when an officer in training shot and killed him. A grand jury decided to not indict the officer, citing a perfect storm of human errors. The manhunt continues for at least one person responsible for the murders of eight family members in a rural town of Ohio. The victims were found in four different locations, all shot in the head, execution style. Three children were found alive and are undergoing medical evaluation. 250 additional American troops have been approved to travel to Syria and support local forces in battling the Islamic State. President Obama made the announcement last Monday. The plan follows an earlier decision by Obama to add 217 U.S. troops in Iraq to battle ISIS. North Korea test fired a submarine-launched ballistic missile off its eastern coast last weekend. The missile flew about 19 miles, which was short of the 186 miles that would be considered a successful test. U.S. officials say this is North Korea's attempt to develop its long-range missile capability to strike the U.S. When we come back, the race is on for the best chili in the valley. And two local sisters become the youngest business owners in the state. There are not many beauty supply stores owned by African Americans in California, but two girls are trying to change that. Valley View News reporter Erica Sims has more on the story. Two sisters have become the youngest to open a beauty supply store in California. Kiana, 21, and Kayla, 19, were encouraged by their mother to start their own business after not being able to find a job after graduation. We started off with a small website and then we eventually built up into actually getting the store. The young entrepreneurs decided what they were both interested in before starting their business. Well, okay, well, what do we like? And I was like, well, we like hair. We know people like hair, so what can we incorporate with that? And I'm a naturalist, and Kayla likes weaves and stuff like that, so we were like, okay, why not we combine that and make a beauty supply store? The two girls got a lot of buzz after the opening of their store. Well, to me, it makes me nerve-wracking because I'm like, oh, there's so much so much pressure and weight on our shoulders. We're the youngest. We have to prove that we can do this just as you know, well as anybody else. The owner said they want everyone to be able to shop at their store. When I got in the business, I was like, you know, we're going to make our weaves affordable for everybody to have that nice hair that you want so everybody can, you know, feel better than buying a cheaper pack of hairs. The Davis sisters say having a black beauty supply store is hard work, but believing in yourself is key. You're yeah, sure it's going to be scary and you're going to listen to a lot of the negative feedback and stuff like that, but don't listen to it because if you feed into it, you're not going to want to do it. At first, we've gotten, you know, some negative feedback here and there, but we didn't listen to it at all. We didn't let it get to us, and now we own a store. So my advice to you is just do it. The beauty supply store has been open for a month now. In Moreno Valley, Erica Sims for Valley View News. In sports, the Los Angeles Lakers have fired head coach Byron Scott. Scott coached the Lakers for their two worst seasons in franchise history. Sources said the Lakers wanted a new vision that embraced the current style of wide open play and outside shooting. 
A federal appeals court has ruled that Patriots quarterback Tom Brady must serve his four-game deflate gate suspension. Experts say the decision may finally end the legal debate over the scandal. A Dallas County grand jury indicted NFL quarterback Johnny Manziel on a Class A misdemeanor charge. Manziel is accused of hitting, kidnapping, and threatening to kill his former girlfriend. Manziel was a standout at Texas A&M and played two seasons with the Cleveland Browns. He was cut from the team in March. CSUN's baseball team took two out of three in its weekend series against Hawaii last weekend. Senior Brandon Berry hit two home runs in the series. And the CSUN softball team split its series against Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Taste buds were in for a treat at the 40th annual Chili Cook-Off and Classic Car Show in Thousand Oaks. Valley View News reporter Lisa Cho has more on the story. It was a family affair with people from all walks of life, including birds. Mayor of Thousand Oaks, Joel Price, attended the event as a cook-off judge. This is my fourth year judging uh, at the Chili Cook-Off, and I look forward to it every year. It's just a great event, um, brings a community together, and, and allows an opportunity for people to come out on a beautiful day and for a good cause. Contestants are judged in three categories, red chili, chili verde, and salsa. With over 20 vendors competing in the cook-off, Chief Judge Mark Sweeney explained how he picks his favorite. I like chili that has a great flavor up front and then gives you that nice warm feeling in the back of your throat. That is what a great chili comes out to me. The key ingredients shared by most competitors seem to be mainly luck and salt. Last year's red chili winner and 1986 world champion Jim Beatty first got involved in chili competitions on a dare. Keep it simple, stupid. That's my motto. And if you keep it simple, just make sure your meat's done, your flavors are there. Don't overpowder it. It's no wonder the former champion ran out of more than six gallons of chili earlier in the day. The winner of this year's chili cook-off will go on to a world championship later this year in Palm Springs. The winner will receive $25,000 and bragging rights to the best chili in the world. Mm. In Thousand Oaks, I'm Lisa Cho, Valley View News. Well, that looked pretty good. What do you think, Jarina? I wish I had some chili. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Jarina Silva. And I'm Nicholas Seaman. Have a great day.